You don't look good. You should take the day off. It's too soon to go back to work. No, I'll be fine, honest. Well, what did the doctor say? I didn't see a doctor. Why not? You should have. Well, there was no point. There's nothing they could do. And anyway, my mate was with me, so... Maybe it isn't a miscarriage. What? If you haven't seen a doctor, how do you know for sure? It might be all right. It might For just... God's sake, Daniel! Our baby's gone. I don't need a doctor to tell me that, all right? Sorry. Look, I know you said you didn't want to go to Oxford, but I really think you need to ring them and tell them you've reconsidered. Our baby's just died. I am not going to Oxford. Well, you should. Something good's got to come out of all this. OK, look. We both need some time to process this, to deal with the grief. It's important that we talk about it. You've been Googling it, haven't you? I just want to help you. Right, well, the best way is to stop going on about it, OK? It said that you might want to avoid talking about it because of feelings of guilt. What? You know, like... Like you blame yourself for what happened, which you shouldn't, because none of it was your fault. All right, well, I'm going to work. Sinead. Just leave me alone, will you? And stop suffocating me. Not so, I you should have been in Kent's 20 minutes ago. You're the one who's running late, mate. Yeah, well, I didn't sleep that well last night. Yeah, well, if you'll spend all night on your Ouija board... You what? Oh, yeah, yeah, Pat's into the spirit world, didn't you know? It's not what his favourite movie is. Ghostbusters. Ah! Ah! That's still funny now, is it? It's still funny ah! now! You carry on. And you'll be laughing on the other side of your face. Something here. The guys are not a. Come on, you were asking for asking it. Asking for it. Look, I know we overreacted. Overreacted, Billy. Look, I warned you to back off. He's under a lot of stress at the moment. Yeah, well, he's not the only one now. I'll tell you what, if you find some other mutt to do his work for him, because I'm not going to do it. <sighs> Should you know what? It's kind of fun living here. Mm. I thought you loved me. So did Liam when he slept with Carla. So did Carla when he slept with Tina. Yeah, all right, Nick. I'm just saying, some people never change. Tell about my dad. It's OK. You're right. See? Even his son knows what he's like. You need to get ready for school, Nick. Come on, make some breakfast. Well, he probably does love you in his own way. It's just not necessarily a way that means he stays faithful or sober. Do you know he got together with her when he found out about the IVF? Maybe I shouldn't have burdened him. Maybe it was too much too soon. Hey, don't you go blaming yourself. If it wasn't her, it would have been somebody else. It's only a matter of time. Best you find out sooner rather than later. Mm, before I left my husband, you mean, and my home. Peter's still not answering. What if he's passed out somewhere, drunk? You think you can nip round to his flat and check if he's OK? No, I couldn't. He's your brother. No, we're not related. He's your blood relative. I'm just a cuckoo in the nest, remember? Anyway, Dad, go yourself. Well, I would if I didn't have to wait in for Pat. Oh, go on, it'll only take you a minute. No, I'm sorry, Dad, but I've got a shop to run. Well, I have for now, anyway. Well, we'll talk about that later at the moment. Yeah, right now you've got more important things to think about, like your real kids. Amy, darling, enough of that. You've got to get to school. I still can't get it right. We shouldn't have to play in this flipping show. Yeah, well, that's your granddad's fault, not mine. I know. Bet he won't make Simon play in the football tournament before I buy him a new football. Probably not. Morning, morning. All right, Pat. 
about time. You said you'd be here for eight. Yeah, sorry, can I have to go back to the yard to pick up some tools? I've been waiting in, specially. Anyway, while we're at it, when is this kitchen going to be finished? You haven't even fitted the worktops yet. Well, that's because they sent the wrong colour. Which reminds me, I've got to pick up the new one. But you only just got here. What would you rather, Ken? I sit here twiddling me thumbs? No, I'd rather you'd have remembered in the first place. Well, I'm remembering now. Ah! Why am I surrounded by people who always let me down? Peter again. You should turn it on. I know he's got no control when it comes to women and booze. But when it comes to him talking his way out of things, he's the best. Not that you're biased or out. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That somehow you're different. That what you and Peter have is special. It's not. It'll wreck your life like he wrecked the ants. So, I get out while the going's good. Hey, is Eileen back yet? Oh, no, she's still at sister's, but she rang and said she's having a nice time, hey, which is more than I can say for her hubby. How do you mean? Oh, he was in a right mood this morning. I reckon it's because he's not getting any. <laughs> Mind, if that were true, I'd be in the mood all the time. Yeah, me and all come to think of it. <laughs> we'll see you later. We'll see you later. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. You haven't seen Peter, have you? Oh, no, Ken, sorry. Oh, yeah, thank you. You seen Peter? No. Oh, I'm looking all over for him. I've tried his flat everywhere. I've had a blazing row. Now he won't speak to me. Right. Oh, sorry. You've got enough worries of your own, haven't you? Any word from Sinead? Yeah, yeah. She turned up last night. Oh, good. So, uh, are you back together? Well, that's great. You don't seem very happy about it. She lost it, Dad. She lost the baby. And it's all my fault. They say that stress can cause a miscarriage, don't they? And he was giving her the most stress. Me. No! You mustn't blame yourself. Who else is there to blame? Toya, please, just pick up. I'm so sorry, Daniel. You tell Sinead I'm sorry, too. I will. Thanks, Dad. Oh, Peter, I've been looking everywhere for you. I even went to the flat. Yeah, I know. But I thought I made it clear I don't want to see you. I just want to check that you're all right. No, no, no. You want to check that I'm not face down in a gutter. Do you want to step your breath while you're at it? Oh, could not smile. Oh, dear. You're unbelievable. Do you know that? I'm asking because I care. No, Dad, you're asking me because you don't trust me. And now Toya doesn't trust me either, thanks to you. You've ruined my life. You realise that, don't you? You've done that all by yourself, or at least alcohol. I'm not drinking. How many more times? You know, until you own up to it, there's no point even talking to you. I am telling the truth. I'll prove it to you. Well, uh, I found Peter for all the good it did me. You've come to give me a news update. I'm not interested, cos I really don't care. To... No, no, I've come to talk to you. Can we please call a truce? I mean, you don't really think I feel differently about you just because you're not my flesh and blood. Well, put it this way. I think we know where we come in the pecking order. <sighs> I don't think I've ever met anyone as self-obsessed as you. What? Oh, well, there are people with bigger problems in the world. Oh. You mean poor little Daniel? Worrying about how he's going to fund his way through university. Oh, except he's not, is he? Because good old daddy's there to help pave the way. Unlike me. No, I've got a struggle on my own, as always. As a matter of fact, Daniel has got far bigger worries on his mind. Mm, like what? Like whether to have Oxford monogrammed on his underwear. You know, you really don't give a damn about anybody else, do you? Well, you clearly don't give a damn about me. Yeah. I've seen you do the most callous things, like try to sell your own child. And I know that deep down you killed somebody in cold blood. Now, don't try to deny it. But I've never given up on you. And I've done more for you than I've done for any of my other children. And you accuse me of not caring. 
Oh, come on, Dad. We both know that was only for Mam's benefit, and now she's not around, your true colours are shining through. I came in here today to try to make things up with you. But you've just convinced me that you're not worth the effort. Oh, well, fine! Fine, because the feeling's mutual! What gives you the right to walk into my life and you screw it up like this? I just don't understand. I've been nothing but nice to you. This is how you repay me. I don't think it's very nice to play someone along I and then drop I didn't play me. you along and you know it. I've been honest about everything. You know she's left me because of this. Good. Oh, oh, that's good. Well, now you know how it feels. Right, you're coming with me and you are going to set things straight. <laughs> Why should I do that when this is so much fun to watch? Because I've lost everything because of this. My son, the woman that I love. Why are you doing this? Well, I wasn't the one who told them. It was your dad that did that. And he didn't need much convincing. He must have thought you were a loser all along. And now you are. Unless... Unless what? Unless you're prepared to beg. Are you serious? Come on, Peter. Now, let's see if you've got it in you. Get on your knees and say please. And I might take pity on you. Is it worth a shot? No chance. No. You psychotic cow. You're insane. Hmm? Yeah. Hi, it's me. Um, I think we should talk. You don't have to stay, you know. It's only the rehearsal. Uh, yes, I do, because I know how nervous you are. I'm fine, honest. No, darling, you're not, because I can tell. You're not still worried about what you heard Grandad say, are you? A bit. Yeah, well, don't let it get in your head, because he is not worth it. Hiya. Hiya. Listen, I'm not going to be able to make it to the show tonight. I'm sorry, it's just... They've asked me to do some overtime at work. Really? Luke, don't lie to me, because I'm better at it than you are. Oh, come on, Trish. You know I'm not into this classical stuff. It'd be wasted on me. Babe, she is really looking forward to you watching her play. Why are you just saying that to make me feel guilty? She won't even notice I'm not here. She's been practicing really hard, you know. Well, to be honest, it's not like it's made much difference. <laughs> I'm just nipping home. Forgot my rosin. Oh, great. She can come with her, could she? You all right? Yeah. You don't look it. I'm fine. Listen, I'm sorry I was snappy at you this morning. It doesn't matter. No, it does. You've been really nice. Ow. What? What? What is it? Oh, no, no, it's just a few cramps, that's all. And you've been feeling sick. Yeah, it's, it's normal after, you know. Still, maybe you should see a doctor. No, no, stop fussing. I'll be all right. I'm just tired. Oh, oh, that's all right. Oh, 
That's all I need. I just need some sleep. <sighs> Please will you get me a duvet. Of course. Still there? Where's Grandad? Out. Well, what time do you knock off? About half an hour after I do these flame and work tops. Why? No reason. Could you do that outside, please? Only us half my asthma. Why'd you never pick up? Right, I'm gonna hide the money behind the clock. Everyone's out tonight at my show, so it'll be safe to come. Spare key's where it always is. Text me, let me know you got this. What are you doing here? You won't send me. Look, I know I upset you. Sorry, but I was only joking. Right. No, honestly, I was. I think you're a great little player. And you've got guts. I'd be terrified playing in public. Well, I accept your apology. You can go now. Yeah, well, uh, I promise your mum won't leave without you, so. Ah, thought you were at rehearsals. Yeah, we're just about to go back. She forgot her resin. Resin. Uh, you are coming to my show, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Come on. Sooner, but I couldn't get away from work. Oh, it's fine. I mean, it's it's good of you to come at all. So, uh, why are you here and not at Peter's? I've left him. I see. Look, could we go for a drive? Because um, I'm, I'm not sure when the others are going to be back, so... Of course, yeah. <laughs> Car's still as scruffy as ever, mind. Still not vacuumed, eh? I'll let you off. Nice to see you putting your back into it. Thank you. I've been hard at it all day. Especially since your Seb didn't turn up. You mean you're working solo? Yeah. Oh, great. So now it's going to take even longer. Of course, you could always try speeding things up a little. <laughs> what are you saying, Ken? I want to go slow. I'm saying, for the last two weeks, I've been living on a building site. All I wanted was a new kitchen. It should have taken a week at the most. Oh. Experts on kitchens now, I can. No, no, but you don't need an expert to let you know when you're being, uh... What, Ken? What were you going to say? Ripped off? Is that what you're saying? That I'm dragging this job out to make a few extra quid? Let me tell you something. I could do without the job completely. I've got enough on my plate as it is. How about this, Ken? I'll pack up my tools, leave you in peace, eh? Don't you dare! I'm not having it left like this. Well, then you're going to have to pay. Cos I'm going to have to hire him more labour. Oh, so now the solution's more money, is it? I should have seen that one coming. You know, you're lucky I employed you at all after all that business with the flats. People told me I shouldn't trust you, and I'm starting to think they were right. It took me two buses to get there, all for an afternoon's work. When you could have had a full day's work here. Billy, I told you, 
I'm not working for no nutter. Is anyone serving in here or what? Oh, sorry, Peter. I'm just getting ready for a Himmy show. When I get there early. Hey! Hang on, you can't just. Peter, put that back. Look, here, Liz. Take that, okay? That'll cover it. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. She's just through there. I rang a doctor. Sinead? I believe you miscarried a couple of days ago. I'm really sorry. It's a terrible thing to have to deal with. So, you're having stomach cramps? Yeah. <clears throat> Has the bleeding been heavy? Uh, not too bad. No, but she's been feeling sick. I have to say, these are all perfectly normal symptoms after a miscarriage. I told you. I just wanted to check. What with you not having seen a doctor? Oh. So your miscarriage hasn't actually been confirmed yet? Oh, uh, well, uh, no. Well, in that case, I think I'd better arrange a scan. Just so that we're sure. What? You mean that she might not have had a miscarriage? Well, I wouldn't want to raise your hopes, but we do need to know what's going on. Uh, there's no point. Well, you heard what the doctor said. I, I know that the baby's gone. Because, well, um, I didn't actually have a miscarriage. I had a, um, I, I had a termination. And we're back to Coronation Street in half an hour. If anything changes, if you start to get feverish, you can ring 111 or come see. Yeah, they, they gave me a leaflet at the, uh... At the clinic. You can say it. I'm so sorry. Doctor, I'll show you out. You've been so good with my dad. Well, you were worried. Look after yourself and each other. Let me explain. Our baby's gone, and not by accident. I get it. I just need you to know mm. that... Before, that's when I needed to know. <sighs> Save me embarrassing myself in front of a doctor. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Why would you sit there angling for sympathy? I wasn't! We'd been together for, what, five minutes? And then it suddenly were perfect parent material. Good enough. Better than most. When you hide things from me. Daniel, wait! Daniel! That Oxford Masters would have changed our lives. Did you think to ask me about that? No. I didn't need to. I'd made my mind up. On your own, like you've done for years. But, Daniel, you're not on your own anymore. You've got to learn couples, sure things, the good and the bad. I am learning, fast. It doesn't change how I feel. We would have had a beautiful child. We could have made this work. You'd have resented us. This is your time now. Your golden moment of opportunity. Golden what? You'd be banging on about dreaming spires next. Get this into your skull. I don't give a toss about Oxford anymore. I wanted a family here with you. You only think you did. <sighs> one day you'll thank me. You hypocrite. You're the one that should have spoken up. If you weren't ready, you should have said something and I might have understood but to pick out colours for a nursery and then sneak behind my back. To abort my child and then lie through your teeth. I tell you what, I have learned one thing. I know you now, and I am well rid. Did 
did you, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I heard. Please, Chez. Don't make things any worse. Daniel! What is it? I must be blind. Or a mug. She didn't lose our baby. Oh, sorry, her baby! I didn't even get a say. What's happened? How could you do that? To someone that you're supposed to love? Decide something that's best for them without even a word? Uh, uh, Daniel, sit down. sit down. Sinead, who we were all so worried about, she didn't miscarry. She had a termination. She hoovered it out. <sighs> what are you going to do? No coming back from this. Look, you're in shock, and it must seem like the end of the world, but uh, it doesn't have to be. For once, Dad, do you think you might get off the fence because this is your grandchild that I'm talking about? Yeah, please listen to me. Right now, it's raw, but in a few years, you'll feel differently. Might even feel relieved. You sound just like her. Well. Buys you some breathing space. Take it. Don't make any rash decisions about Sinead or your future. Ah, eh? oh, I, uh, I bought you something when I heard about the offer from Oxford. And then the baby came along. Time didn't seem quite right, but maybe now. Sorry, Buster. If your name's not on the list, you ain't coming in. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Weatherfield's Got Talent. Fill up from the back, please. Oh, well, it's getting really busy in here. Sure there's enough space for me. Uh, nice try. That was doting Grandpa's chair. And guess what? He's not coming. Don't come. Oh, he's staying home. Daniel's got a paper cut. Do you know something? Amy's leg could be hanging off. And it still wouldn't trump a call from the blue-eyed boy. Look at her. Bless her. She is really nervous. Amy! Amy! Hey, come here, Amy. Break her leg. Did you know she was pregnant? Jess, don't torture yourself. Was it an accident? We took her for a long time. We never even had a scare. Oh. Oh. I suppose you want me to do a disappearing act now. From my own house. This is proper Caribbean. But all right. He thought you and me would want to talk. That's where the trouble starts talking. I'm listening. If I hadn't listened to Ken. Oh. Mm. Right. That's rank. I didn't want Daniel to hurt me. So I lied. I said that I'd miscarried. And now he knows. He hates me. <sighs> Peter Barlow. Mm -hmm. I might want Peter Crouch. Actually, I wouldn't have minded if it had been. You're just telling me this thing? Well, yeah, he's stuck a £20 note on the bar. I mean, Strictly speaking, we owe him money now, but not with the way he did it. <sighs> Listen, Mum, if Peter so much as sniffs a bottle, then he's dead. Amy. Amy. Jocasta, Miss Porter's checking the toilets again, but yes, our first soloist is missing in action. Hey, did you hear that? Our Amy's gone here, well. Little madam. Right. <laughs> Text me when she's back. Hey, hang on, you're not leaving me here. Oh, 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 so sorry, sorry. Is that your foot? I'm cool. Do you know, I reckon she sussed that granddad's blown her out. All that fuss about a new violin and press ganging her into performing, and then he drops her. But your cast is keen for curtain up. All right, so listen, just go get Arsha and Adi, OK? They're professional. We've never heard of his stage fright. Oh, come on. Sorry. Whiskey. Magic word? Large. I'll get that. 
Not if it comes with a homily. Let me tell you, your little boyfriend was very lucky this morning. But for Eileen, I'd have knocked him into the middle of next week. 480, please. Well, then, um, I'll mark his card. Back in harness. First thing tomorrow at Ken's, 8.30 on the dot. Yeah, no point. I'm on my way round there to tell that second-rate Stephen Fry exactly what he can do with his worktops. There's another one with no respect. Yes, the blessed Kenneth Barlow. Whatever else I am, Billy, I'm a craftsman. I can tool oak, marble, granite with the best of them. That clown wants a five-star service and he wants to pay a one-star fee. Enough. Yeah, maybe just sleep on it. What did I tell you about homilies? The day you break sweat for minimum wage is the day you can lecture me. I don't get it. Are you trying to burn every bridge you've got, or what? Why buy a dog and bark yourself? Oh, so we're speaking in riddles now. Are you half cut? I don't need to lift a finger, Steve. I've got my very own wrecking ball. Me dad. Now, this is more like it. A lemon liqueur in the shape of a shoe. You're meant to be resting. I can't. My head is in the shed. You're bound to be upset, babe. You've been through a massive trauma. Come on, snuggle up. Gone with you, you know. You have talked me out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I am surprised. What was it Ken said? I suppose he wanted the Sprog's name down for eating. He thinks I got pregnant on purpose. He said that? Not out loud, but pretty soon. Daniel would feel trapped too, so, yeah. So he got rid, just like that. People think it's easy, don't they? You can be in and out in your dinner hour. It's not easy. Oh, love. They gave me a painkiller, you know, stop the pain so it didn't hurt. But I could still just feel everything. What, they didn't knock you out? Oh, babe, I would have found the extra money. It wasn't about that. I wanted a local. I wanted to look that doctor in the eye. I was saying goodbye to a wife. <laughs> the least I could do was do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what you wanted was to punish yourself. <laughs> Are you the last one who needs punishing in all of this? <sighs> no sign. Ken coming. No, he's going to stop in just in case Amy comes back. AKA, he'd rather finish his chapter. She'll turn up. Maybe not in time for the concert. Why don't you try and make an incoming street? Oh, yeah, it's a good idea. And I'll try a red rag. Good idea. In one minute your heart's breaking for him, and the next you just you just want to stab him in the eye. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm even blurting this out to you. Just me neither. After the way I spoke to you, the fella's poison tea. People like that, they never change. What matters is you called. Things were bad and the first person you thought of was me. Just wanted to feel safe. <laughs> Come on. I've got the kids this weekend. They'll be over the moon. I'll never mention Peter's name again.
Sinead, it's Daniel. Can you give me a call, please? Folks say I'm paranoid, but they're still out to get me. Should I speak to Toya? No. All right, Ken, then. No, he's even poisoned Sai against me. I mean, it doesn't matter what I say, he's still Grandad's word that counts. I'll never, ever win while he's around. I'm an inconvenience. You know, after all these years, he still treats me like I'm a child. Well, why don't you do what I did and cut your ties? Well, Steve, that's easy to do when your dad's in prison. Oh, no, I'm sorry, man. I'm gonna have to get this. It's fine. Mom, is this important? And she's definitely not at her mate's. Right. Yeah, no, I'm coming back now. OK. Right. Yeah. Right, listen, you need to come with me. I can't leave you here. Well, don't you trust me either? Well, at least let me take the bottle. No. Just go. Amy needs you more. Don't move. I'll be back. You haven't seen Amy on your travels. Beth. What? No. Well, if you do. Well, I'm looking for Daniel. Well, I'll save you some time. You're not going to find him in there. Oh, that's a machine. OK, Amy, we know you don't want to do the concert, but... Searching high and low. They had to start the concert without you. I'd have only mucked it up. No, darling, you wouldn't. You would have smashed it. You're brilliant, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I better phone Luke and let him know I found you. Should we synchronize watches? This is serious. I'm being serious. I'm going to go to the cab office. I'm going to put the word out on the radio. Good idea. Did she have a coat on? <sighs> yes, she did. By right, I should be slapping your legs, lady. Yeah. Me and your grandma, we missed that concert because of you. Well, it's not too late to catch the second half. Come here. What about the rest of your stuff? We may as well get in now. Or go to Peter's. Get the worst over with. He won't try any strong arm tactics. Not if I'm there. Oh, he's not like that. Well, you've just spent the last few hours telling me he's a car crash. Still, he... Still what? He needs me. We need you. Josh won't shut up about oh, you. Don't do if, that. I if you're going to save someone, Toya, make it someone worth saving. 
He is. Peter is. And I'm the only person who can do it. Toby, I'm, I'm so sorry. I really didn't mean to mess with your head. I... Delete my number. Delete all our numbers. The next time you want your ego massage and ring someone else, we're done. I got your message. I can't talk to you right now. Sorry. What? I'm going out. You need looking after. That's your job. You're a fella. I've got somewhere that I need to be. She needs coffee and water and rest. She needs you. I'm not a wicked person. Oh, I've got to right? go. I wasn't thinking straight. I'm sorry. What are we? The stuff on this shoe. It's as bad as his dad. What's happened? Uh, I just dashed over here to tell him where to stick his job. I came through the back door about ten seconds before you arrived. They found him here. He must have had another stroke. He rang an ambulance. Well, I've just got here. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, ambulance, please. Number one, Coronation Street. Yeah, it's my dad. I think he's fallen downstairs. Check his pulse. Do something. Okay, uh, we're looking now. Dad? Dad, can you hear me? I've got a pulse. Hold on in there, Dad. The ambulance is on its way. Where are you going? What's in the bag? Are you talking to me now, are you? It's a bit late. You quit yourself? Yeah. It's nice to glass. Where's that stop? What's happened? Eccles? Is it Ken? Yeah. One, three. One, two, three. Dad. Dad's had a fall. Pat found him. I found him at the bottom of the stairs. I think he might have had another stroke. Saw the lights. Who's going with him? Uh, we'll keep Amy. I'll go. Uh, you two, you follow me on. Hey, Zed, take the cab, yeah? Oh, thanks. Hey, are you all right to drive? Of course I am. I hope they're keeping the keys otherwise, wouldn't they? Amy, um, I'll give you a call as soon as I know what's happened. Say goodbye to Grandad, eh? Pull through, won't you, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah, of course he really has to. It's been a week-long wait, but the moment is finally here. It's Coleman and Tenant time. Broadchurch is up next on ITV. In an hour, Gordon Ramsay is our host for this week, and his first guests are Frank Skinner and Ricky Wilson of the Kaiser Chiefs. A new unmissable drama Harlots begins on ITV Encore at 10, starring Samantha Morton and Leslie Manville. more time in here than we do at home. That's right, Tracy. You think positive. That's great. Well, at least you didn't get fractured ribs and all the rest of it like last time. Concussion and a punctured lung. Hey, um, 
I wonder if they know about the DNR order. I'll write him off, I would. No, Peter, that is not what I'm doing. I just want to make sure that we've got everything right. It's what he wanted. Yeah, won't it be on his records? Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, you know, you don't have to stay. No, I don't mind. No, really, you get back to work. I'll let you know if anything happens. Um, nothing you need? No, uh, Daniel said he's going to bring a bag of Dad's stuff, so we'll be all right. Okay. Any word from Adam? Oh, yeah, uh, he sent me a text. He said he's getting on the next flight from Canada, but he's not picking up his phone now. Well, if he's on a plane. Oh, sorry, sorry, Daniel. Um, any news? Still unconscious. You got any idea what happened? I've not heard anything. Probably another stroke, like you said. Do you need a key to get into the house? No, no, I'm on the way up there. Thanks. Just say the step to me, bro. Yes. And I wondered if you'd like to do a piece on it. Well, I disagree. I think breast cancer is of huge importance to women. And I, I know Councillor Metcalf would be available for interview. She's been involved in off the street protests, that's right, yeah. Whose daughter used to be a glamour model, yes. And she's also available for interview, by the way. Tomorrow won't be too soon at all. Great. I'll speak to you then. Bye. What are you doing? Getting us some publicity. With Sally and Rosie. Playing with fire more like. Well, it goes the interview, didn't it? You've not even asked if they'll do it. Sally! Radio Weatherfield want to interview you about the mastectomy bra launch. Really? Yeah, we're going for a, a women owning their own bodies angle. Well, in that case, I'd be delighted. And Rosie. It'll give her a chance to say where she stands. Mm. Well, I could certainly talk to her. Great. Well, I'll give you the details later. OK. All right. Thank you. All right, see ya. Have you seen her social media following? She's a PR dream. <sighs> ah, there's a sight to greet the day. Uh... No black pudding. Yeah, we, we, we're out of black pudding today, unfortunately. But on a morning when Ken's life hangs in the balance. Oh, yes, we must get our priorities right. Any news on that front? No. Two strokes in six months. Yes, indeed. Auntie Kathy's back from Scotland today, but she needs a taxi from the station. Ah, uh, well, uh, Tim's over there. Why, why don't you go and ask him? Uh, you'll knock that black pudding off the bill, won't you, Roy? Eleven o'clock. Well, you know that I don't discuss work when I'm eating. You've been no good at a business lunch. Well, it's not lunch. All right, seems it's you. Cheers, Tim. Plenty of grease on this butter. <laughs> Could do with putting a bit of weight on all this worrying I've been doing. Must have lost two stone the last few months. You're not losing any weight. Yeah, I'm losing business, though, aren't I? Why? What's happened now? Oh, cab company we've got a contract with on Albert Road's gone bust. Used to fetching a lot of work. You're going to be all right, though, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Okay. I'll get you another brew. Have you been to see Ken at all? Uh, why would I do that? Well, with knowing Daniel. Oh, no, 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 I haven't. Uh, any word on how he is? <sighs> Not that I've heard, no. Well, do, do give him my best regards if you do see him. Uh, that's if he's conscious, of course. And I've got no plans to see him, all right. Why do you keep talking as I have? You're not regretting it, are you? No, no, but oh, it is doing me head in. I mean, there's Toby. He's decent, honest, reliable. Who is it I want? The bloke who's wrong in every possible way. Well, we don't always get to choose, do we? 
He was acting so weird, though, when he was leaving the flat. Yeah, because he was doing a midnight flit. No, it was more than that, Lee. He was... He was jumpy, he was edgy. Never seen him like that before. And then guess what I find when I go into his flat? A broken whiskey bottle in the bin. Hmm. Well, no wonder if he was shifty. Oh, yeah, Ken did say he thought he was drinking again. You know, we really need to sort this out. It affects my life, too, if he's back on the bottle. Yeah. Maybe you should come back here, you know, just till it all calms down. Would you mind? No, of course not. Listen, I'm taking sight to the hospital later. I'll let you know if Peter says anything. Come back, come with you. Are you sure? Well, I've got to start somewhere. Welcome home! Thank you. Shall I bring you care, sir? Yeah, thanks, Mum. Good trip. You're very nice. How was Scotland? Hello, Brian. OK, the new. Funnily enough, I've never heard that expression once. I've never heard it from a Scot. What does it mean, anyway? All right, one second. Um, I, I bought you a, a present by way of an apology for uh, kebab games. Oh, no, you, you shouldn't have. I'll see you inside. I still feel terrible about it. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I hope you like them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're meant to raise a smile. Oh, very fetching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hiya. Oh, your boxes. Uh, well, thanks. No surprise. You OK? You know what you were saying earlier about worrying? Ah, things a lot worse. What, well, even after the extra cash from the girls? I love them to bits for what they're doing, but he said up in the ocean. Well, how bad are things? Oh, put it this way, I'm not sure I'll be able to carry on paying a mortgage. You're kidding. I wish. Well, we'll still be able to make the next payment, though, won't we? I would have bank on it. No, it looks like I'm looking at bankruptcy. Did you realise it was that bad? Hmm. You're all love. What? Uh, yeah. Any word on Ken? No, not that I know of. Mm, we've all got something like that to look forward to, I suppose. Some of us sooner than others. <laughs> You sure you're OK? Yeah. Shouldn't you be home if you're under the weather? I do feel a bit out of it. Mm. You get yourself off, go on. Thanks, Mr Connor. So, none of you have actually seen him yet? No. Still doing tests, apparently. Where is that doctor? She said she was going to update us ages ago. Adam. Better late than ever. Oh, baby. Hey. How are you doing? Prodigal grandson returns, eh? Yeah, thank you for saying goodbye before you swanned off to Canada. Yeah, sorry about that. How was the flight? Same as always. Hey, it's brilliant you got here so quick anyway. You must be jet-lagged. Yeah, well, uh, enough about me. How's Grandad? He's pretty much the same since I sent you that last text. You all right, Amy? Yeah. Oi! What have you done to your face? You know how it is. Oh, somebody's husband catch you at it. And you, a lawyer. Oh. Hey, Doctor, any news? There is very little change. Uh, we're keeping him sedated for the time being. But if you'd like to go and see him now... Oh, uh, can I just ask, is, is it a bigger stroke than before, or what? Well, looking at his scan results, we can say categorically now this wasn't a stroke. What was it, then? We're waiting for a second opinion. Right, OK, well, thanks, anyway. Where can I get an outside line? And I'd like a phone number, please, for Weatherfield Police. How did he manage to fall? Could have tripped over one of Pat's tools. He's always leaving stuff lying around. You didn't deserve this. Do you reckon he can hear us? I don't think anybody really knows that, darling. Nice to think he can, though, eh? Yeah. Hey, 
that. Dad? But we're all here. And we all really love you. Babe, it's nearly dinner time. I should have said lunch. Is that a bit posher? Ask Jenny. She's a social climber, around here. What? <laughs> Blasted thing! What? Well, Jenny's roped Sally into a local radio interview about the launch. Apparently she has all these followers on social media, but I'm dumbed if I can find her. Yeah. You don't think you should have won this by me first? You don't mind, do you? Jenny knows best. Right. Yeah, look. Not for the faint-hearted, I wouldn't think. You're not kidding. If these are her followers, I'd hate to see her enemies. All right. Oh, some of these are a bit juicy. What? Oh, especially that one. He's still going to use her. Well, it's done and dusted now. And if she can tell you this sort of abuse, then she can go out and bat for me any day of the week. You get through a lot of mint tea, don't you, Yasmin? Well, it's good for everything. Digestion, stress, and a cup before bedtime beats any sleeping pill. Oh, well, be careful you don't nod off this afternoon, then. <laughs> ah! Settling in. Well, I've just been going through my mail and I've got two free theatre tickets for tonight. Back just in time. How do you angle that? It's just a theatre club I'm a member of. For tonight, you say? Well, come with me if you like. I can't, I'm afraid, but perhaps Brian might be free. Are my ears burning again? Oh. Kathy has theatre tickets for tonight. No one to go with. Oh, I find that hard to believe. Believe it. Well, if uh, no one else is uh, forthcoming, uh, I could step into the breach. No pressure. There you are, Kathy. Don't you want to know what play it is? No. What is theatre without surprise? Oh, all right then. So what time does it start? Oh, we have to leave about half six. So if I order a taxi? Yeah, that would be very nice, Brian, thanks. That's just mine. He and I are just friends, you know. So you keep saying. Answer my calls. I've been busy. Did you go into Grandad's to get the money? Why would they do that? You told me it wasn't there. I didn't know you got my messages. If I'd been there, I would have called an ambulance. Listen, those messages we sent each other the last few weeks, you need to leave them. Yeah, okay, I'll um let you know tomorrow. All right, all right, thank you. Bye, bye. <sighs> you found any work yet? Well, this website reckons to help you make extra money. What, how to sell old clothes on eBay? Who was that on the phone? No one? Come on, it's never no one with you. Right, I rang the modelling agency to see if they've got any work. And, well, they've offered me a shoot. Well, that's good, isn't it? Oh, it's not glamour modelling, is it? Yeah, but Sophie, it's too grand. How much? Yeah, it'll go a lot further than selling old clothes on eBay. But I thought you turned your back on all that. Yeah, I had... And it goes against everything that my mum's campaigning for. Do you want to see Dad lose everything? Obviously not. But I don't think he want you to go this far. What, even if he can't pay his bills and we just end up on the street? OK, so how would you feel doing it? Because apparently it was the darkest time of your life and you wouldn't want to go back to it. Yeah, but Sophie, this isn't about me, is it? <sighs> Saying it's another stroke. So are you. Never know when your time's coming, do you? Gotta live for the day. Oh, hey. How is he? There's no change. It wasn't a stroke, apparently. So what was it then? Don't know. Hey, size fine. Your grandma's gonna be okay. I'm going to get a drink. Of the non-alcoholic kind. I don't come over all innocent, Peter. I found that broken whiskey bottle. I uh, know, listen, I, I never touched a drop, I swear. And where are we going with that bag? <sighs> I know what you're thinking. Oh, come on, Peter. Just be honest for once in your life. This affects me and Zion all, you know. All right, look, I admit, I was tempted. But on Zion's life, I came to me senses. It's just all this stuff with Chloe. It's completely doing me head in. What? Well, that woman over there, she's a copper. How do you know that? 
She investigated Maria when that loony Kaz disappeared. I remember seeing her. Well, what's she doing here? Hmm? No idea. Listen, uh, I'm going to nip out for a ciggy. Oh, yeah, that's it. Run away. Look, I've been cooped up in here all day. I'll be two minutes, OK? Oh, you never know with him. You've been quiet. It's this Ken business. You're not close, are you? No. Makes you think. What life can throw you at any minute. He's got a good 20 years on you. It's not always about age, though. We can't worry about it. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. That's why you gotta live life to the full whilst you can. That's exactly what Pat Phelan said. All right, well, there you go, then. <laughs> then why don't we bring the wedding forward? We're what we're waiting for. We're not kids. We know what we want. Well, well, I know, but... We can afford it. Well, when were you thinking? Don't know. When it just come to me. Uh, where are we? March? Well, nearly April. <sighs> then how about this summer? July's a nice month. July?! Yeah, good weather, long evenings. But there's only... Three months away. Decent places get booked up a year in advance, and there and there is so much to organise. But it's not impossible. Well, no. I mean, I mean there's always why somewhere. Why don't you get that cunning little mind of yours into good use and get weaving? Nothing much on the wireless this evening. Repeat of last year's proms. Can't say, and I check it's my favourite composer. Oh, not exactly easy listening, is it? <laughs> Are you off anywhere interesting? Uh, uh, no, not really, yeah. Talk on carbon emissions in town. Oh, sounds promising. Oh, it's very dry. Why are you going, then? I have to, because of work. But it is one of the great environmental issues of our age. Well, we'll not solve it where I'm off tonight, I'll tell you that much. So what aspects will it call that? Well, oh, it'll just be a um, general uh, overview. Nothing I've not read a hundred times. Still sounds interesting. I might tag along with you, if that's uh, all right. Oh, uh, no, problem is, uh, it's fully booked. What, a, a talk on carbon emissions? Yeah, green awareness. It's higher than ever before these days. But these things are usually in the town hall. There'll be masses of space. Well, this one's in annex. Stays on the electric. But even though there's huge demand... Yes, look, I've got a dash. I'll still come with you. There's bound to be a cancellation. No, 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 no. It'll be a waste of your time. Um, besides which, the chap doing it has got a um, nervous twitch. It's very uh, off-putting. I'll let you know when the next one is. You enjoy your Yana check. Well, I never knew hypocrite was two words. Hippo the animal and crit with two T's. Learn something every day. I don't know why you continue to look. You're just gonna upset yourself. Ah, oh, you'd have more time for these trolls if they could spell. I heard an interview today with a bloke who invented the smartphone battery. You know, smartphones wouldn't exist without him. Really? Mm, you know what? He doesn't even have one. Mm, thanks for that. You know why? Because he's fed up with people fiddling with them all the time instead of talking to each other. That one's better. Hang on in there, Lucy from Stockport. Lucy from Stockport spelt their short for they are. Yeah, well, that's an easy mistake to make. What were you saying? Nothing. Not about this interview? Yeah, the inventor of the smartphone. Oh, Rosie, that reminds me. I'm doing a radio interview for Weatherfield Radio about the mastectomy bras, and they asked me if you wanted to take part. What, me? Yeah, what do you think? What, after that Gazette interview? Well, I did have my reservations at first, but it does give you a chance to set the record straight, and you can't let setbacks like that defeat you. Yeah, I don't know, Mum. Do you know, and as someone who used to be a glamour model and then saw the light, I'll say yes, shall I? Is that everyone? What's this about? The hospital got in touch with us because of marks found on your father's arms. Marks? Well, nobody told us. The medication he's been taking since his stroke makes him bruise more easily, as you know. But there are specific marks on his wrists, consistent with a struggle. There's also a lesion on his head, which indicates he was struck by a blunt instrument of some kind. 
Are you sure about this? Mm. So far from having a stroke, then falling downstairs, the, the evidence shows he fell after an altercation with someone. Since this is now an attempted murder investigation, we will be interviewing everyone. Whoa, hang on. Murder? Someone tried to kill your father, Mr. Barlow. And we're going to find out who. All new next tonight, some talented kids prove to Dawn French that they really are little big shots. They're really impressive. Them being in the jungle is good preparation for life at the Solana at nine. George Shelley checks in as a guest in brand new Benidorm. And with radio host Chris Moyles joining Gordon Ramsay later, it's the nightly show at ten. to kill him. I don't think we know who. No. After what you said he was like when he stormed off to Ken's. Don't think we should go to the police. I feel like the guy, he's got a screw loose. I could see him whacking Ken over there and pushing him downstairs, can't you? Yeah, but that's... That's our imaginations, it's not evidence. Billy, he had motive, he had means. And a very nasty temper, no? Mm, yeah, but that doesn't prove anything. OK, what about me mum? She could be married to a murderer. If we don't go to the police, we could be letting a potential killer go free. Yeah, but if we do, we could be sending an innocent man to jail. I don't think they're going to send him to jail on our say-so. Well, no, exactly. We haven't got any evidence. So it's just let the police do their job, yeah? All right. Keep a very close eye on Pat. Oh, now, any news about Ken? He's still unconscious. Oh. Keeping him sedated. Traces of the hospital. Hey, is it right he was pushed? They say he hit on the head first. How can something like that happen in his own home? Frightening. Perhaps he disturbed a burglar. Was it a break-in? I don't know. It might have been someone he knew. I mean, uh, it's more than one member of that family that's been up on a murder charge before. Is that evidence or gossip? No, no, I was just saying... Maybe you should go to the police and tell them the things. Oh, Luke, no, no, Luke, I didn't mean that... Luke! I didn't mean to upset him. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Right, where are you going? I'm going in there to get me tools. Sorry, you can't go in there. We're still gathering evidence. Gathering evidence? Yeah. I thought he'd had another stroke. He didn't have a stroke. It's an attempted murder investigation. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Good. What happened to Tracy? Uh, she said she got some urgent business at the shop. What could be more urgent than this? I don't know, Daniel. I didn't ask. Sorry if I was a bit, you know, yesterday. It's OK. We still... Still... You know, it wasn't me or your grandma, yeah? Oh, and I've deleted the messages. You were up early this morning. How was he? No change. I'd like to try and interview you all today. Was all? Everyone who had access to the house. It's just routine. Eliminate as many people as we can from the inquiry. <sighs> thought someone was throttling you. I'm on the radio today. I know, I heard you doing your breathing exercises all the way through the news last night. Yeah, you have to push from the diaphragm. It gives you more breath and control. Opera singers do it, apparently. Sally, like you're doing an interview on Weather FM. You're not singing in the Albert Hall. It's Radio Weatherfield, and I'm talking about breast cancer. I don't want to let anyone down. Well, just make sure you don't gargle on the show. People think you're drowning. 
Give us your phone. Why? Because I want to download the app so you can listen to me interview. Well, can't we record it and listen to it later? No, you have to listen to it live, like football. Well, oh, the agency called to have upped the offer by another £1,000 for Glamour Shoot. Yeah, but... Yeah, but, Sophie, Dad is going bankrupt. Yes, and Mum would hate it even more than you do. Yeah, but I have to help him. This is not a good idea. Well, have you got any better ones? Is he asleep? Yeah, well, he is now, yeah. Oh, he's stocking up so he can keep us awake later. Look, I'm sorry, I'm... Oh, don't be daft. You can stay as long as you want. Listen, I know what Peter's like when he's drunk, and he'd definitely not been drinking when we saw him at the hospital. Do you know what? I just don't know what to believe. Well, Peter's a complicated man. It's easy to jump to conclusions. Well, Ken believed that he'd been sleeping with that woman. Yeah, only because she said he had. She might not have been telling the truth. Oh, I don't know. None of us do, do we? You really need to speak to Peter. I'm going to take Oliver for a walk. We just got him down. Yeah, but uh, if we want him to sleep tonight. Michael, why don't you come with me now, please? I'll drink a water. I'm just about to get back to the hospital. Do you know that someone assaulted your dad? And pushed him down the stairs. And because his watch broke in the fall, we know exactly what time this happened. So what I want to do is just build up an accurate timeline of the events on that night. OK. Right. So when did you last speak to your dad? That night. At the house? Yeah. What time was this? Uh, just after seven. And what did you talk about? My girlfriend lost our baby. Lost? She had an abortion. And that's what you talked about? Yeah. I was upset. I, um, I just felt like she betrayed me. You were angry? I was angry. But Dad was really supportive. He, you know, helped me look to the future, concentrate on going forward and not back. He was actually talking about my studies, about maybe going back to university. And you felt better? Yeah. How long were you there? Not long. Um, ten minutes, maybe a bit more. And what did you do next? I went for a walk. Where did you walk? Well, I got a tram to the Keys, and then I went for a walk, cleared me out a bit, then I came home. And what time was this? Uh, just after eight. Did you buy a ticket for the tram? Yeah. I just don't have it. Do you know, it might be at home. It'd be good if you could find it. I'll have a look. And again, did you see anyone else? <clears throat> yeah, Sinead, my girlfriend. She was waiting outside the flat. And? She was crying. She was upset. Her auntie was with her. I think she took her home. And then what? And then I went back to number one. To see your dad? Yeah. Yeah. He had a good way of making me see things in perspective. And then I opened the door and there he was. There who was? Pat Phelan. Just standing there over my dad sprawled at the bottom of the stairs. Just standing there? He was white as a sheet. He said that he'd come round to tell my dad where he could stick his job. He didn't even call an ambulance. I was the one that called 999. <clears throat> How long did you spend looking for your daughter? I don't know. I wasn't checking the time every five minutes. Oh, look, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't expect to be questioned about attempting to murder my own dad. Like I said, this is just routine. We're simply trying to establish where everyone was when the crime took place. Really? Yeah. Right, well, like I said, I was out looking for Amy with Luke. The whole time? Yes, the whole time. Sometimes it's easier to split up when you're looking for someone. No, we were together. And you found her? Yeah, and, um, that's when I saw Dad being put in the ambulance and taken out of the house. Does your dad have any enemies? Mm. Enemies? Mm. <laughs> no. He's a pensioner. He spends his entire time at the library and walking the dog. Of course he doesn't have enemies. Are you having some work done in the house, the kitchen? Yes. Listen, can I go now? Because I'd really like to see my dad. What can you tell me about Pat feeling? Pat? Uh, look, I don't know whether this is relevant, but they did have a row that morning. 
And what were they arguing about? The kitchen. Dad wasn't happy it got heated. Right, are we done now? Maybe you'd like some water. No, thanks. You were in your flat? That's right. On your own? Yeah. Doing what? Watching TV. What was on? Uh, I can't remember, sorry. Really? Look, I'll be honest with you, my head was all over the place. That night, I'd been having a few relationship problems and I came pretty close to turning back to the booze. I'm a recovering alcoholic. And did you? No. Um, I think the news was on. Or, or a news programme. What was the lead story? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember. Can you think of anyone who'd want to push your dad down the stairs? No. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, my dad can wind us up, that's for sure, but... I hit him on the head, push him down the stairs. No way. Is there anyone else you think I should maybe be talking to? I mean, what about Pat Phelan? I, I don't know. What was his relationship like with your dad? Well, he was a builder, you know, he was doing the kitchen. He was found standing over your dad at the foot of the stairs. Are you saying he pushed me dad? Can you think of anyone else who could have done it? No comment. So where were you at seven minutes past eight? No comment. The rest of your family have been very helpful. Or rather, they've at least tried to answer my questions. Is that a question? Mm. Oh, yeah. You have legal qualifications. So you know this is a serious crime. Again, question? Or are you just thinking out loud? So how did you get those bruises? No comment. Where were you on the night of the assault? No comment. What's your relationship like with your grandfather? No comment. Did you push him down the stairs? No comment. You changed, Kev. Cheers. Cheers, love. So, how is he? Oh, covered in bruises, bless him. He looks so frail. Oh, poor Ken. How was the play? Well, I'm not sure I really understood what was going on. We talked about it for hours afterwards. I think Brian, well, more or less worked out what was happening. You're smitten. I'm having a nice time. How much more trouble can one man cause? Oh, Nick, stop going on about it. As all you and Toya ever go on about. You were hating him this morning. By the end of it, you were hailing him as a hero. That's not true. Oh, everywhere I go, I see him. Came back from the wine merchants the other day. There he is, sitting on his taxi, smoking a fag, probably skiving. Well, I'm not bothered about Peter, but I am worried about our Toya. Mm, she's best off out of that relationship. Yeah, we'd be best off if he packed his bags and went back to Portsmouth. So come on, spit it out. Well, you're not going to like it. Oh, your dad doesn't need any more bad news. Rosie's been offered to do a glamour modelling shoot. It's well paid and she wants to do it to give you the money. We don't want you to have to declare bankruptcy, Dad. We heard you talking. But I genuinely think that she just doesn't want to do it. Yeah, well, she's not doing it. And she's definitely not doing it to bail me out. Have you told your mum? Oh, are you OK? Oh, I've been hunched over my computer all day. My shoulder's killing me. Come here. Sit down. Got strong fingers, but just go with it. She fixed me a dozen times. I mean, I had a frozen shoulder. I could play tennis at Wimbledon now. Mm -hmm. Times your radio interview. Half three. I mean, what you like, eh? New bra orders, radio interviews, and a wedding to plan before July. I mean, I don't know how you do it. Oh, yeah, congratulations. Well, between you and me, I have been looking for ages. <laughs> but I just can't seem to find the right wedding dress. Uh, well, I might be stating the obvious here, but when it comes to dresses, we do have quite a lot of talent in this very room. I sometimes worry about my own carbon footprint. Did you pick up any tips about reducing it? Last night, the talk you went to about carbon emissions. Oh, 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 oh yeah, very interesting, uh, you know, uh, fascinating stuff uh, and practical too. H how so? Excuse me? What? What's the practical aspect of the talk? Small changes. Um, many small changes can 
make a massive change for humanity. Oh, I do wish I'd known about it. Where, where, where did you see it advertised? It wasn't. I mean, I didn't. See, advertising, um, posters, electronic media, it's all burning fossil fuels. Um, word of mouth, that's the eco-friendly way of advertising. Fascinating. P please, go, go on. I want to hear all about it. Well, maybe we should go back to the house. Yeah, we can go where you want. I am doing this. Where is he? You're not going to wander around being photographed in bra and pants to bail me out. End of. I thought you were finished with all this. Yeah, but, Dad, I want to help. I can't let you go bankrupt. That's my problem, not yours. We can't do a radio interview about women with body image issues after breast cancer if you're planning on doing a racy photo shoot. Look, I appreciate you wanting to help, but I'll sort this out myself without you having to do something I don't think you want to do. Hello? Oh, hi, yeah, I'll be there in two minutes. OK, bye. That was Jenny, the reporter's there. Look, I know you mean well, Rosie, but you have to start respecting yourself and your body. I'm gonna go and do this interview on my own. I'll see you both later. Right, so you're both mad at me? Oh, we're not mad. You've got a good heart. Now, that's one bit of your body you can be proud of showing off. Don't sweat it. All you have to say is that you were with me the entire time we were looking for Amy. Why did you lie to the police? Well, because they think that I did it. But well, you didn't do it. Luke, now say it like you mean it. Well, surely lying is only going to make things worse. Listen, babe, they think that I got away with murder once, so they want to get me for this. That's not fair. No, of course it's not fair. Look, please, all I'm asking is that you back me up. Of course I will. Thank you. And don't make up any details, because then they'll know that you're lying. I mean, Ty could be out of a job any minute. The kids need new shoes. They're only in in five minutes. Mm. My mum used to buy me shoes that were so big, I used to have to wear six pairs of socks to make them fit. Oh, for doing my shoulders. What? Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel great. Oh, oh I love a cream horn. Mm. Mm. I'm a real massage therapist that get 50 quid an hour, not just a cream horn and pat on the back. Have you spoken to Daniel? You know they're saying it's attempted murder. Mm. I think you should go to the hospital and see him. Ken? Yeah, and Daniel. I'm not sure he wants to see me, to be honest. Look, after what Ken said to you, there's some people might think you had every reason to shove him down them stairs. I'm just saying, the police are investigating. If you could patch things up with Daniel without telling him what Ken said, I think that's best kept to ourselves. Oh, I don't want you getting into trouble over this. Well, it started with Sally. She has um, personal experience of breast cancer, and she told us how difficult it is for women who've had surgical procedures to find attractive, well-fitting bras, and I thought Underworld should do something. And Sally? Can I ask you to tell us a little more about your cancer experience? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I do think it's very, very important to talk about these things. Um, I was diagnosed, it was eight years ago, um, Christmas time, um, and it was a terrible and traumatic experience, but uh, I survived. And uh, I've been in remission now for seven years, and uh, I do go and have my you know, annual checkups. And in fact, I've just had a mammogram recently, and uh, thankfully, it came back clear. Bit of a rush, but uh, you know that film that you uh, you wanted to see. Well, it's on in town next week. What are you doing Wednesday? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, <clears throat> uh, no, sorry, busy. B uh, busy all week. Sorry. Oh, oh, right. Well, okay. Uh, I best get off. I don't want to be late. Uh... <clears throat> Who's there? Hi. What are you doing? You're trying to catch me out. What? Oh, you thought you'd sneak in, try and catch me drinking, some leggy blonde. No. I'm sorry. My head's all over the place. 
I've spent all day at the hospital, the police station. I'm not thinking straight, I'm sorry. You were leaving? But in a way. I need to know what's going on. Have you made any plans for your tea? Your mum left the lasagna in the freezer. Well, uh, we, we're going out, aren't we? Come on, lads, I can't eat it all by myself. I'll get it. Just trying to be civil. Think of it as a peace offering. I, I don't know. I... Come on, I thought you guys specialised in forgiveness. It's the uh, police. They want a word with Pat. Oh, you were great, love. Oh, thanks. But I can't seem to get that Radio Weatherfield app off my phone. Mind you, I've learned a lot about pigeons and allotments. <laughs> now I'm off for a shower. Yeah, Mum, I was, um, I was so proud of you. I hope that one day you might be proud of me. Oh, I am proud of you, Rosie. I'm going to go to the pub with Sophie. Do you want to come? Yeah, I'll come later. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, yeah, this is Sally Metcalf. Weatherfield General? Um, well, uh, yeah, I had, um, I had a mammogram about, um, three weeks ago on the, on the 10th. Well, what kind of mistake? <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. Are you saying that my cancer's come back? <sighs> now we're going to have to phone your mum. Why am I always the one who has to deliver bad news? What's going on? The police have just arrested Pat. Attempted murder. Coronation Street continues in half an hour. Tracy Barlow. Oh, not you lot again. Hey, have you charged Pat a feeling yet for trying to kill my dad? This is about something else. What? Is this my private we can talk? Listen, I'm, I've got loads to do. I mean, I... It won't take long. Please. I saw you with Toby. Now, what was I going to do? You were leaving me, so... The only good thing I had around here was going. And that's the reason you were leaving? No, it's... I had a million reasons. I, mean, I got Chloe turning psycho on me. My dad thought I was having an affair. I'm a rubbish dad to Simon. I came this close to drinking again. <sighs> I'm sorry. Listen to poor me. You know what? I'm, I'm just as sick of my pathetic excuses as you are. <sighs> I believe you. Really? Mm. 
Nobody else does. That makes you just as stupid as me. You're a good man. I don't keep trying to tell myself that, but then I look at all the people that I've hurt who I love and I, I wonder. OK, maybe you're not a good man, but I think you want to be one. I never touched Chloe. And I didn't drink. Well, there you go. That's two temptations resisted. You're amazing. I'm not afraid of hard work. Well, you've picked on the right bloke this time, then. Sal, can I use your post shower gel? See, I'm asking this time, I am a husband capable of learning. Hey, what's up? The hospital rang. The test... They made a mistake. It wasn't clear. My cancer's come back. I've got to go into hospital tomorrow. Oh, no, I don't think why. Not me. You know, maybe off-white. Or oh, dirty white? Oh, yeah, dirty white. That's more me. What's this? Oh, we're helping Jenny design a wedding dress. It's like a team project. The machinists are here to work on the orders. We don't pay you to make sketches for wedding dresses. I know that. Uh, and uh, are you uh, paying for their time? What do you think you're doing? It was my idea. I thought it might be nice to make everyone feel involved in the wedding. Maybe you could choose one person to be like your uh, style consultant. Yeah. Hmm, how should I? OK. I want Eva. Me? Well, I like your style and, you know, it'll give us a chance to mend a few fences, build a few bridges. Will it be about... Aww. <laughs> and an American hot and spicy. Four seasons. Um, so Hawaiian? Yep, Hawaiian. Um, hang on, do we want garlic bread? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just get a couple. No, Tracy's not here. I don't know where she is. Could have done this with an app on my phone. I'll just... Apparently... Luigi's is the best pizza in Weatherfield. They are. Mm, they do lovely crispy bases. Yeah, you said it'd be about 20 minutes. Where have you been? You're late. Oh, uh, Peter's getting pizzas. Do you want one? Mm -hmm. The police have arrested Pat Phelan. When? Well, I should call Peter back. Yeah, um, order me a margarita. Whoa, 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 Pat, Pat. Calm down. Never mind. Calm down. I need to get a message to Eileen. You tell her that I need no, to... No, no, sorry. No, well, I'm busy. I've got lots to do. Listen, Todd, I get one phone call. And you wasted it on me. They think I did it. Well, you've got a nasty temper on you, haven't you? Prone to, uh, outbursts of violence, I'd say. Listen to me. I've got an alibi. I was working at Luke's, only nobody saw me. So I can't prove it. Sorry. You're on your own this time. Hey, but Pat, good luck. What are you doing here? You're the opposition. I, I was hoping you, you might have some 50 P's. Well, I'm not taking any out the till. I'll check in the back. Thank you. Keep an eye on him. I can't say I'm that keen on the uniform. I saw an interesting play. Last night, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. With Brian. Yeah, it was very thought-provoking. You might like it. With Brian? Yeah. Last night? Mm, yeah. Mm. Play? Yeah. Was it about carbon emissions? Brian thought that they were all trapped in purgatory, endlessly living out different versions of their own lives. You can have five quid worth. That's your lot. You're very kind. 50p's like gold dust in here. Thank you. Oh, dear. I think I might have put my foot in it. I only left you for a minute. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Do 
it was after eight o'clock. Yes, I called in there just to pick up some tools I needed to finish a job at Luke's flat. You'd not even called an ambulance. No, I just got there. There wasn't time to call an ambulance. And you were installing a kitchen for Mr. Barlow? Yeah. How was it going? What? The job, how is it going? Yeah, fine. No problems. No problems. And your relationship with the client? Ken, I like Ken. So why did a witness tell us you were heard having a heated argument with Mr. Barlow on the day of the attack? It was nothing. Tell me about it. Look, I arrived late. We had words. Listen, truth be told, I was on my way to tell Ken I'd had enough and I was quitting the job. And you were found standing over the body at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> um, I was thinking that I may go down to Oxford for a couple of days, see if that place on the MA is still available. You can come too, if you want. Do you think I can get the time off work? Yeah, I ought to think about getting back to Canada myself. Oh, do you know something? I'd love to get away for a few days, you know, go somewhere. Whoa, quiet. just just hang on here. Dad's still in hospital, he's not even conscious. Whatever happens with Pat Phelan, we're all staying here until we know Dad's better, OK? Nobody's going anywhere. Play date. We should invite Bradley and Rose up round here. They're nice kids. Ah, there it is. There's what? Massage therapy. What? It's a college course, Ty, three nights a week. Hang on a minute, what college course? See these? Huh? These are going to make us a lot of money. Guess how much you can charge for an hour of massage therapy? I don't know, 20 quid? Cheapest I've found? 50 quid. <laughs> 50 quid to rub someone's shoulders for an hour? Of course, I would need a proper folding table and towels and scented oils. Hey, hang on a minute. This means you're going to be rubbing your hands all over naked people. It's massage therapy. It's not... It's not what you're thinking. Well, what if I'm not the only one thinking what I'm thinking? What if these clients are thinking what I'm thinking? See, now you're thinking what I'm thinking. With everything going on at the garage, I'm thinking this could be the answer to our money worries, Ty. Well, I don't know. Take your top off. What? You heard me. Top. Off. I listened to you on the radio today, you know. You're strong. You beat this once, you can do it again, you know. Every year, every test, I hold my breath. And I can only breathe again when... When it comes back clear, you know, like I've dodged a bullet. And this time... Hey, hey, come on. Come on. Hospitals make mistakes, love. We don't know. They make mistakes all the time. Maybe the test was the all clear. Perhaps they mixed it with somebody else, eh? I need to go and pack a bag for the hospital. Mum, have you checked your notifications? Uh, no. We have got something to tell you. No, Mum, you don't understand. Just let your mum speak, will you? No, play it him. Uh, this is Sally Metcalf. This is Weatherfield General. I believe you had some tests recently. Weatherfield General? Uh, yes, I, I had a mammogram um, three weeks ago on um, the 10th. I'm afraid there's been a mistake. What kind of mistake? I mean, you said it was clear. Yeah. That was the mistake. It wasn't clear. I don't... I don't understand. Are you saying that my cancer's back? Sorry, but that's what it looks like. But how did you... Oh, you'd be surprised. We make mistakes all the time. So you're saying that my cancer is back? I think we'd better book you in for some more tests. Are you free tomorrow morning, say, 9.45? Pack a bag. You may have to stay in hospital for quite a while. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can. Sorry. Okay. See you then, Sally. Bye. <laughs> well, what was that? What was that? Hang on a minute. She's laughing. Why is she laughing? It was a prank. That's 
see what it was. This is somebody's idea of a sick joke. There's loads of messages here from the same person. Why didn't you say anything? It happens to everyone. Well, this is abuse. She's a nutcase, so. Tim's right. Can we get her number? Oh, it'll be a pay as you go. She'd have to be a total idiot to call from a traceable phone. I feel like going around there and smashing her face in. Yeah, so do I. It's just gonna cause trouble. We need to report it to the police, Mum. She should be locked up. Yeah, and throw away the key. Why didn't you say anything? Would you pass the salt, please? Although I think you'll find the soup is perfectly seasoned. I find your balance of salt and pepper is always <coughs> spot on. Why did you lie to me? <coughs> Excuse me? You weren't at a talk on carbon emissions. You were at an experimental theatre performance with Cathy. You seem very well informed. Why do you lie to me? To spare your feelings. My overriding feeling last night was one of relief and relaxation. It's good to have some solitude. If you and Cathy wish to spend time together, then that's perfectly fine with me. That's very magnanimous of you. Whatever happened in the past, there's no reason why you and Cathy can't be friends. Friends? Yes, we are friends. So if you and Cathy do choose to go out together again. I hope you won't feel you have to hide it from me. No, I, I promise, no. Can I have the salt? See, the time and the data on the film, I know it might not help, but at least it establishes where Pat was for that portion of the night. No, I reckon Mr. Feeling will be very grateful you came forward with this. You know, we couldn't let an innocent man go down for a crime he didn't commit. Could I? No. Do we need to ask why you were secretly filming in this flat? Oh, that. It was... It, uh, it was nothing. It was just a prank, you know, a bit of a laugh. Yeah, it's turned into a concrete alibi. Yeah. I'm seeing the way you've been looking at me. What? You think I did it? I don't. You do? I don't. Tracy, leave him alone. Oh, well, don't blame him, actually. I mean, if I was that detective and it wasn't for Pat Phelan, I would have me in there as the prime suspect. Well, you do it for him. You what? And what about him, eh? I mean, he's no stranger to a prison cell. Yeah, except I was innocent. It was your fiance who killed Tina, not me. Come off it, Peter. You've never been innocent your whole life. Come on, guys, don't fight you. Where are you going now? I want to get some fresh air. Is that OK? Tracy! Is she OK? Yeah, she's fine. I think this whole thing's shaking us all up. Well, let's just hope they get it sorted as quickly as possible, eh? Mm. So, in the meantime, who's going to fix the rest of the kitchen? <laughs> Anybody apart from Pat Phelan. No, well, let's not go too overboard. It's your wedding day. It's the one day you can go overboard as much as you'd like. I think tradition decrees that I should have nothing to do with this, so I'm off to the pub. Mm -hmm. Mwah. Uh, fancy a pint? No, I'll stay for a bit. You know what really would be great? What's that? If this one popped the question? Because then we'd be, like, related. If you could keep your nose out of our private life, please. Yeah, well, nothing's private around here, is it? <laughs> well, that's true, isn't it? I mean, we all know each other's secrets, don't we? <laughs> Still, there's no rush. He's probably just waiting for the right moment. Or has he been scouting out the jewellers looking for the perfect engagement ring? I shall say no more. <laughs> Extra chilli sauce? Or are you spicy enough already? Be lucky! Oh, never mind. You've not ordered anything yet. How about going to the pictures? You've not made any alternative arrangements? Uh, uh, no. Yes, sir. Roy was in here earlier. I told him about the play and he seemed 
Ah, no, I, I spoke to him. And, and he's fine with us being friends. Oh, oh, good, good, yeah. Because I suppose that's what we are, isn't it? <laughs> friends. Yeah. Are you having a kebab or what? I, I, I just uh, popped in for a quick chat with Cathy. Well, she's on shift. If you want to talk to her, you better eat some up. But I, I've just had soup. Soup? Soup's not a meal. Man like you need some proper food inside him. Kebab. Oh, OK, a small one. We only do jumbos after six. Uh, well, go on, then. Smell like a chip. Well, of course, it would be better with proper scented massage oil. Oh, I'd love some chips. I'd... Ah, ah, you've got strong thumbs. Yeah, I work with my hands all day, don't I? I've obviously worked up the muscle. Ah! It's got to be hard time to work out all the knots and the tension. Right, right. <laughs> hey, actually, that feels looser, that. It's definitely better. Mm hmm That's massage therapy. What, and people pay for that? 50 quid an hour. How much for me? Mates rates. 45. 40? Don't quit! Fight me, Ty. I've got thumbs of steel. Oh, I know. I've got the bruises to prove it. <sighs> Ty, I really think this is a good idea. I know. We're going to have to pay the bills somehow, aren't we? When the kids due back? Any minute now. Oh, well, give us another couple of minutes on the back and shoulders, will you? <sighs> oh, it's a good pain. <laughs> Can I buy you a drink? No. I'm, um, I'm waiting for Billy. So you were recording me all the time, eh? Must have been hilarious. Hmm. I got you off an attempted murder charge. Yeah. Now you did. Now, why would you do that? Well, I think my boyfriend has helped me develop a model compass, and I can't say I'm happy with it. Well, I hate to say it's odd, but I owe you one. No. No. Let's just keep things the way they were. I don't like you. I don't trust you. And I'm watching you. Okay. All right, well, in that case, I'm not going to hold my breath. What did he say? He said he's going to look into it. Oh, this is disgusting. How can somebody send all this horrible stuff to you? Yeah, well, that's what the world's like. But you've been replying to her? Yeah, well, I didn't want her to have the last word. Yeah, but as soon as you reply, she comes back. She likes it, Sal. She's getting off on you being angry and upset. Right, OK. It's not my mum's fault. It has to stop. There's no way it's going to stop. Oh, it can do. One simple way, delete your account. If you haven't got an account, she can't attack you, can she? There's no need for that. She found the house, love. She knows where we live. Yeah, well, these people, Tim, they're all talk. Yeah, well, the talk hurt today, didn't it? An hour ago, you were crying. It's about time we started fighting back. So, tell me. How come you're so keen to fly back to Canada, then? Why are you so keen on keeping us here? Because my dad's lying in a hospital bed. How do you think he's going to feel if he comes round and we've all snuck off? Leaving you to face him on your own. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, Peter, leave it, eh? You want to be careful what you say, Adam. Otherwise, you might get a few more bruises. We have a visitor. Evening. Oh, hey. Sorry to disturb you. I just got back from the cop shop. I thought they arrested you. Yeah, well, sorry to disappoint you all. But thanks to a fortunate bit of CCTV, I'm in the clear. Cast iron alibi. Couldn't possibly have pushed Ken down them stairs. Just so you all know, I happen to like Ken. And I hate the idea that someone tried to do him in. Hey, it's a hospital. Hi, yeah. Yeah, speaking. Oh, thanks for telling me. So, looks like Dad's recovering. They're going to bring him out from under sedation in the morning. <laughs> Good old Ken, eh? Maybe now we'll find out. 
and tried to kill him. Our hit US drama, Lethal Weapon, continues next tonight here on ITV. Then later at 10, his last show of the week, Gordon Ramsay talks to John Legend and Bradley Walsh on The Nightly Show.